Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Ladies Wednesday Wisdom Webinar. I'm Lisa Ernst, and I'm the Executive Director of Savvy Ladies. If you have any questions during the webinar, and if we have some time at the end, you can type them into the chat box. And if you're joining us by phone, email your questions to info at SavvyLadies.org. Today, I'll be speaking with Rebecca Eve Salco. Rebecca is a recovering attorney, a financial coach, and the creator of the Dominate Your Debt Boot Camp and Rock Your Money coaching programs. She is on a mission to empower all women to be confident and in control of their money. Rebecca's fun approach to personal finance might have something to do with the fact that she's a trained opera singer and an award-winning karaoke performer. She is also the author of Dominate Your Debt, a work and playbook, which we'll be talking about today. So hi, Rebecca, how are you? Hi, Lisa, I'm great, how are you? Good, good. Well, as you know, I've read your book twice. <laughs> <laughs> And um, with different sort of thinking processes, when I um, when I was when I was going through the book and looking at all the various exercises, but um, I think it would be important for our listeners to understand your journey and how you got to um, creating this uh, work and playbook. Ooh, cool! Thank you for reading it twice. That's really awesome. I've read it a few more times than that, but that's really really great. Um, so yeah, I, so I'm a lawyer, as you mentioned, I'm a recovering lawyer and growing up, I was always really, really good with money, you know, managed it meticulously. Every nickel that I found on the ground would go, would get documented. So I mean, really, really organized and fastidious really about my money. And that continued on until I went to law school. And then suddenly I graduated from law school with $168,000 in student loan debt. Um, and luckily I had a, a job at the time that enabled me to, to make the payments on that. But seeing how having that kind of debt really limited my choices um, as far as the kinds of career paths that I could pursue, I started to get really, really angry um, at myself, at the system that had put me in this debt, um, you know, really just kind of sick, sick about the, the level of payments that I was having to make. Um, I realized that you know something something needed to change. So I felt I felt angry, I felt stupid, and I started kind of getting obsessed with the idea of paying off my debt as quickly as possible. Um, and as I was going through this process, I'm talking to a lot of amazing friends, family, et cetera. And I'm having these conversations with other women and realizing that you know none of us really knew, a lot of us were in the same boat, and none of us really knew what to do or how to get out of it. And money was such a taboo subject that I kind of realized that this was much more important. It's a much bigger, much bigger picture than just what I was going through. Um, so I started doing research. I was talking to my lender every other day and I'm learning all these things about my debt um, that got me so inspired. I started writing this article um, and the article got so long that I was like, oh, this is the outline. This could actually be a book. And that's actually not the book that I published. That's not Dominate Your Debt. It's a different book. Um, but when after about after five years, when my debt was finally paid off, um, I decided that it was time to pursue financial coaching on a full-time basis because what was really inspiring to me was that it wasn't enough, you know, what I was seeing out there was that it wasn't just enough to talk at women or talk at people in general about their finances, but I really wanted to work with them. You know, all the things that I had been learning as and doing as an attorney, I really, really loved and I wanted that to continue. So that is how I became a financial coach <laughs> to help other women who, you know, were feeling, you know, who were not stupid at all, but felt stupid about how they had gotten into whatever situation they were in, feel not stupid about it, feel informed, know where to turn and just create the resources that I did not have um, when I was paying off my debt. And so your particular way of approaching this, and again, the book illustrates that, is um, you're really not lecturing to women about what they should and should not do. Oh my gosh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. That, that, that approach to me, you know, it doesn't work for me, right? Because I'm like, hey, I'm smart. You don't tell me, don't tell me what to do, right? So I don't, I just don't think it works. So that's why I don't do it. Right, so you divided the book into sections so that mm -hmm. you 
so that you could walk women um, through that process. And as I um, and as I confess to you, when I read the book the first time, I was really thinking about debt and thinking about um, people that I know are in debt. And then the second time, I read it with sort of an understanding of my relation or trying to understand my relationship to money and how even though I might not be in you know in overwhelming debt, I do spend a fair amount of time just worried about the money. And, mm -hmm. and so that's why I knew I was going to go back through this book and just do the exercises that are about, you know, really trying to connect um, my behavior and my thought process around money and connect to the feeling exercises. Cause that's what I like about the book. There's a really nice combination of, you know, who you are as a person and how you react to things. Um, and then there's this thing called debt, you know? Um, so I, I thought that was really great. Do you want to walk through um, sort of sort of those phases in the book of how you begin to help someone um, manage their debt? Sure, actually this one we have a slide for. So if you're following along on the computer, ah, there we go. Um, so yeah, as I, as I started working with women on um, taking control of their debt, and that's really what this was about. It's not, you know, I think that's what's unique about the approach that I have, um, as opposed with kind of, as opposed to kind of what what's out there globally with with finances and debt in general, is that it's not just about like being debt free. You know, it's not about just paying it off. It's really about this sense of control and ownership over the process and over your debt. And that's why I chose the word dominate um, for the book. That was not by accident. I'm like that is, as I say in the first part of the book, you know, that's a big freaking word, and this is a big freaking deal. Um, so as I, you know, put this as we as we walk through this and as I put this together, I realized that, you know, everybody was kind of going through the same process of, of dealing with their debt. So we start off first with getting educated. Like there are things that are happening with your debt that are working to keep you in debt, namely interest. Um, but even just understanding how interest is calculated and how, you know, your, your banks, your credit cards, your lenders, whoever they happen to be, they don't have, you have to understand that they don't have your best interest at heart <laughs> interest no pun intended haha -ha. um, they don't have your best interest at heart right like their goal is to get their money back and make as much money as possible um and on top of that and and your goal is obviously different you want to pay as little money as possible so just understanding how you know their their approach is messing with you a little bit um is the first step it's just really understanding like what you're dealing with you know what this monster looks like and then even before we get to any more numbers beyond that we set goals. And so the book walks you through just a few exercises and I call them workouts. So just a few exercises to um, help you get really clear on what it is that you want. And not just like, I want to pay off my debt because debt sucks, but really, you know, what is it that I, wh what is it that debt is either preventing me from doing, or what is it that I'm going to do when the debt is paid off something else that, that you can hang your hat on besides just Debt, 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 right? Because the, the numbers itself, it's actually quite unfulfilling to just be paying off debt. It's not very interesting. So when you're hanging your hat and kind of looking towards something else, keeping your eyes on a much more juicy prize, it makes it a lot easier to make the decisions and choices that you'll need to make while you're paying off your debt. So that's why we set goals first. So we do all this like warm and squishy as I call it, warm and fuzzy, warm and squishy stuff um, before we get into the numbers. And then we start to get into the numbers. So the book actually um, has a lot of space in it and we specifically designed it this way. It really is not just a reading book. It is really designed for you to kind of get out your pencil or get out your paper, I mean, your paper is paper, get out your pen um, and really write in it. Um, so it is a workbook that becomes your playbook. Um, so the organized piece is just about getting the lay of the land. So again, we're not making any decisions yet. We're not, you know, we're not, we're not deciding, okay, well, cool. So this one has the lowest interest. I'm paying this one off for, you know, we're not, we're not there. Um, we're just getting a really clear idea of what is going on with your finances. So that's the organized piece. Um, and then, and understanding that debt is only a part of your finances. So, um, it can't be, you know, I always say like debt doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? So if you have debt, 
the reason you have debt or the, you know, the reason that you have debt is possibly related to something. If you have credit card debt, it's possibly related to your spending in other areas. Um, and if you have other kinds of debt, you still need to understand how that's going to impact your spending or the other things that you're doing with your money. So we want to get organized with everything related to your finances, not just debt. So this book walks you through that step by step. And then we get to analyze and plan. Um, so analyze is where we actually start to look at that information that you've all laid out and start not even not necessarily even yet making choices but really just brainstorming about what those choices could be and getting really clear on your priorities going back to your goals um and then we get to the plan finally ah then you finally are able to make the choices with all the information available to you to put together a plan to pay off your debt and then you have some fun workouts tips tools etc resources to help make sure that that plan is implementable and realistic for you um, but if you've done all the work it should be so just sticking with it right it's like paying off debt as a commitment so it takes time it's a marathon not a sprint especially if you have a lot of it so to just maintain that commitment what are you going to do to make that process easier more fun so that's that that is dominate your debt the process so so in your book you talk about how debt is really designed to keep you in debt and then i mm -hmm. and that you talked about this stinky cycle of debt can you just <laughs> give us an example of how that how that works for some of us <laughs> um well the stinky cycle of debt is what i call um paying off debt without a plan so that you're really good at paying off debt and then getting back into debt again. So like maybe you you had like $10,000 in credit card debt, say, and you're like, I worked really hard to pay that off. And then it's paid off. It takes you a few years, it's paid off. And then a couple years later, the balance starts to creep back up again and suddenly you keep finding yourself in debt. Um, so that's the that's the stinky cycle of, of debt. And um, sorry, I forgot. Actually, the first, I should have written it down. I forgot the first part of the question that you asked me. Well, cause you, cause it's debt like you say, debt works to keep you in debt. Oh, yes. Yep. So the way that, so that's a little bit different from the stinky cycle. So the stinky cycle is kind of related to not having a plan to pay it off. But the way that debt works to keep you in debt um, is by the interest and the minimum payment. So if you are just kind of following the minimum payment that your lender sets for you, which there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, nothing wrong with that at all. But if you're just following that, um, particularly with credit card debt, if you're not paying attention to the interest as well, you're not making enough payments towards the principal to be able to pay off your debt anytime soon or ever. Um, because of most, because whenever you make a payment towards your debt, it always goes to fees first, then interest, then to principal. And the principal, your pal, is the thing that you really need to be making a dent in in order to pay off your debt. So while you're not making payments toward the principal or you're making tiny little payments towards the principal, your debt interest meter keeps clicking along. So that's why, you know, we start off in the book and, you know, with anyone that I work with on debt, we start off with really understanding how the interest is actually being calculated on your debt, how much this debt is actually costing you in real dollars. Um, and not in like a judgy, you're a terrible person, let's wag our fingers at you way, but really as in a, in a you know, you need to understand this so that you are empowered with the information that you need to move forward with it. Great, great. Um, in the book, you state you're never going to feel like doing this, so um, <laughs> your motivation will come from something. What, what have you found in your practice that motivates um, women to start to tackle this issue in their own lives? Mm. Well, sometimes it's something as simple as understanding that this is a thing, right? That, that like a financial coach exists or that a book like this exists. Um, generally, I find that it reaches a breaking point for someone, you know, when they're reaching out to me or they're buying my book, um, or maybe not if they're buying the book, but if they're reading the book, if they're like, I am going to do this, there's, there's some sort of breaking point that has happened. So either, you know, maybe they're realizing they're moving in with someone and they, you know, want to make sure that that's handled or they'd like to start dating someone um, and they are like this debt feels like it's holding me back from being in the kind of relationship that I want to be in because I'm ashamed or embarrassed about it. So it could be something like an actual event that's happening. Oh, I'm getting married. Um, you know, I'm moving in with someone. I want to have kids, whatever it is. Like there could be some sort of event like that on the horizon. Um, or it could be the emotions have reached a breaking point. point. You know, it, it's just something happens one day. You're like, I, this is it. Like I need to take control of this or dot, dot, dot. 
and that's different for different for everyone but often it comes at a time where someone's realizing you know how for at least for me it was that and for other clients it's that you know it's realizing how it's limiting your choices and options in so your life. so the so do you see a pattern um in your practice that it's you know women get to like like you said they either get to a point where they're tired of being um tired and afraid or there's mm -hmm. some there's some life stage thing whether it's babies or marriage that sort of you know puts this front and center in their life um is that is that a reoccurring pattern that you see working with women yes absolutely absolutely um you know i can't i always ask you know whenever somebody applies to coach with me i'm always like why now you know why why now like why is now a good time for you and it's often something just like because i can't take it anymore <laughs> because i'm realizing you know i'm realizing that this you know i'm gonna be 30 or i'm gonna be 40 or i'm gonna be 50 or whatever it is um and i just i, I just can't do this anymore I just can't do this anymore. I'm sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. And like I said, and, and here you are, um, please, please help me, help me take care of this. Um, and as far as, you know, recurring issues and patterns that happen with, um, with the women that I actually do work with, um, I would say the number one is the self judgment. Um, that happens. And that actually really surprised me when I started, you know, getting into other people's, I mean, because I'm really seeing people financially naked, right? When I'm a financial coach, like I'm looking at all their numbers with them. And that's a very intimate kind of thing because people just do not share their numbers. They don't talk about their finances. You know, it's, it's a very, very private thing. So it's actually, it's an honor for me and it's a big deal um, when someone is able to open up like that and, you know, work with me. Um, so it surprised me when I started getting into this with, with women that, that this, the amount of self-judgment that was happening, you know, I've had clients when we get to the, okay, we're going to, and this is an extra, one of the workouts in the book is, you know, one of the, the earlier ones is we're going to lay out your debt. Like we're going to get a complete picture of your debt. We're going to list it all out interest rates, principal, all the information that you need to know. We're just going to make a list. Um, how, how many women will do that exercise with me and, feel sick. Either they tell me that they feel sick or that they, I've had clients, I actually had one that if it comes to mind, she's like, you're going to kill me. She's like, Rebecca, you're going to kill me. I'm like, why? I'm not, I am not, I'm definitely not. I promise. I'm not going to kill you. But it's that it's like, they're almost projecting and I'm not a therapist by the way, but it's that, that idea of, you know, projecting or projecting their emotion of, um, of judgment that they have on themselves onto me. They're like, you're going to judge me. I'm not right. No one is. But the amount of judging that they're doing of themselves, of this, you know, mistakes that they've made or choices that they've made or just life circumstances that have happened, how could this have happened? You know, that that self-judgment, that is the hugest thing that um, I try to break my my ladies of when we're working together. And that the book, you know, I try very hard in the book as well to just keep reminding you, I just don't, this is not about judging. We're not, we're not making any, you know, we're not passing any judgment. We're make, not making any call about you as a person. You know, these are just numbers and, you know, be as detached from this process as possible. Just, we're just listing the numbers. We're just talking about numbers. It's just numbers. It's not you, it's just numbers. Um, and that, that's definitely the biggest recurring theme that I see is just this, this, you know, anger directed towards oneself. And I had it too, but it's this anger directed towards oneself, embarrassment, shame, all those kinds of things. Huge, huge, huge roadblock in the way of taking control of your debt. Um, we never talked about this, but are there men in your practice that come to you for financial coaching? I've had a couple, but I will be straight up honest that I have never worked with a man privately on coaching. Yeah. I've, I've been approached, but it's never happened. Yeah. Cause I would want to understand, um, if that, um, kind of beat up, beat up on oneself is more of a female, um, inclination. Um, I wonder, I yeah. don't know. My sense would be that it probably happens. And so if there's any dudes on this, hi, <laughs> I know we're talking about you behind your back. Um, my sense would be that it probably does happen, but perhaps not in the same way. And if it is happening, I actually think a man may be even less likely to ask for help, particularly ask for help from a woman. And now I'm just stereotyping all over the place. Yeah, no. Um, but that I is think, my, I, think, um, I, think probably, I think there's probably something there that's quite fair and relevant there. But um, because I think as, as women do become more powerful in um, economically as they have over the last couple of decades and all the information indicates that that is going to keep growing, um, that 
at some place we have to break that cycle of beating ourselves up about any number of things. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I, so, and of course this one, because it is, um, it's, it's personal and it interferes or it's part of your everyday life. Money is a part of everyday life. It's pretty hard to, you know, um, feel good when you think you've made mistakes. So yeah. that's why I like, um, maybe this is a good time to talk about because you do pay particular in, um, attention to the feeling part of debt for um, somebody who's going through the book and, you know, working all these various steps. Why did you decide that that needed to be a part of this process? Oh, because women are not stupid. Like we're, we're really smart. And I come at this with the approach of, you know, you, you know what you need to do. I mean, it's kind of, it's, I think there's an SNL skit about this. It's like, Hey, if you have debt, you know what you need to do? Stop spending money. You don't have, like, it's a very obvious, you know, we know that, right. We know that. Like, so if you're in debt, whether it's credit card debt, student loan debt, any kind of debt, whether you have debt, any, any, no matter what it is, it's because you spent money that you didn't have and to get out of it, you have to pay it off. You have to put money towards it so that it goes away. We know that. So if you're not able to do that, you're not doing it for whatever reason, there's something else in the way. And no matter, you know, I, this is what drive me bananas. And this is why I wrote this book. You know, so much of what's out there is just trying to like hammer the same tips home, like about, Oh, Oh, you know, Oh, just do this or snowball your diet or do this, like, you know, kind of practical tips about how to take control of debt. We know that at least for the most part. So, you know, to me, what's getting in the way is not lack of information other than the interest thing, which I really do think most people don't know about or don't understand how interest is calculated because credit card companies, loan providers kind of make it deliberately, I wouldn't say misleading, but they don't make it as transparent as it perhaps could be. Um, so other than the interest thing, I don't think it's, you know, lack of understanding or awareness or intelligence. That's the issue. It's something else. And so that's why I focus so much on the feeling thing, because I think that coupled with the number stuff um, is what makes it so powerful, what gives you so much power even. Um, so if you if you know that, but you're still, if you know that your spending is getting you into credit card debt, but you're unable to stop yourself, then that's a, a very different conversation than, oh, just like pay more than the minimum payment. Like, duh, right? But if you're not doing that, there's something else that's in the way. So that's, that is why you can't, I mean, you can't, you just can't deal with those things separately. You cannot deal with your emotions about money or your feelings about money separately from the actual practical aspects of your numbers. It's just not possible. Not possible. Well, I guess that's my next question. <laughs> do you, is do you see how um, that type of the feelings about debt seeps into the other aspects of, you know, a woman's life? Oh, um, yes, absolutely. 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 Um, I think it's kind of what I mentioned before about the, you know, the catalyst events, you know, I've had women tell me, you know, I need to take control of my debt now because it is, you know, preventing me from getting into a relationship because, or it's preventing me from, well, that, that's actually one specific case, but also it's preventing me from um, being as open in my relationship as I would like to, or, you know, I would actually say also with the feeling of powerlessness, I, I've had a, you know, to me, sickening number of women say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to get help from my, the man in my life, you know, my uncle, my boyfriend, my father, my husband, you know, whoever it happens to be. And just, he's going to help me with it. He's going to take care of it for me. And I think that this, I think that this creates kind of another level of this, I would, again, not powerlessness, but certainly conceding some power when you don't need to conceiving some power and control well, when you don't power need to. and responsibility i mean it's yeah um, yeah <laughs> i mean that you know abdicating that responsibility to someone else i mean that's what all that's what savvy ladies is about like yeah. learn to take control and power because it is your responsibility you know so um um i wanted to ask you if you had a couple um uh stories from your own practice of, of women that you've worked with, um, that you could, you could share with the audience. Sure. I won't name names. I promise you're all safe. Um, if any of you are out there, um, one thing actually I wanted to, um, say also in addition to the power and the responsibility is confidence. I think that the debt, um, you know, feeling, 
somewhat powerless, overwhelmed, judging yourself, all those things when it comes to your debt really affects your confidence when it comes to money in general. Um, and that money being power, you know, really affects your confidence in pretty much everything that money touches, which is a lot. Um, so it's also all a, a lot about confidence too. Um, as far as stories from from my well, my trove of of, um, of goodies. I think one thing that this this process does, and you know, whether it's working with me as a financial coach, or even just you know reading reading or even reading through the book, or just even understanding the process at all about the you know educate set goals, organize and always plan implement, um, is the idea of choice. So there's this feeling when a lot of us start out, and this was the case for me as well. Um, you know, there's this feeling when a lot of us start out that this kind of happened to us, and we're we're stuck in this situation and it's hopeless and you know what are we going to woe to me you know what am I going to do and so the idea of this process is that it brings out the choices that there are for us and so I had I've had a couple of clients um, actually make the decision to move back in with their parents um, when they've uh, when, when, when they started out, you know, I, I, you know, we're kind of talking about like resources and things that they have. And they're like, I would never ask my parents. I would never move back in with my parents. You know, I just, I want to do this on my own. I want to do it myself. Um, and as we've gone through the process, I had one client in particular that I'm thinking of who was like, you know, I didn't want to, <laughs> but I decided based on my, you know, based on understanding my finances and understanding this and I, you know, understanding my debt and understanding, you know, what I would need to do and what my different priorities are, that it's more important to me to be able to pay off my debt sooner and have to suck it up and live with my parents for a while than it is to try to do it on my own and have the debt longer. And, and this is not something, you know, I don't, I don't tell women what they should do. Um, so this, you know, we'll, as a coach, you know, we'll come up with what the options are and then, you know, it's up, you know, I can guide if she asks me, but really it's up to her to kind of make the choices. And um, so I had that particular client decided that she was going to move back in with her client, uh, with her parents. Um, another client of mine, we went through one of my boot camps and we, um, we did the same and the same exercise of laying out everything. And she was like, okay, you know, now I understand all of this debt that I had. And I think she had about $200,000 in student loan debt and maybe 10 or so in credit card debt. And she um, made the choice that she was actually not going to deal with it. She was getting married. Um, and she said, you know, I, I get now that I get it, you know, I feel much more relaxed and much more relieved knowing what I'm going to have to tackle. And I'm making the choice not to deal with it right now you know, but I know now going into my wedding, like I can kind of relax and just enjoy the, the party and enjoy the, the, all the, the fun experiences leading up to my wedding because I know what's facing me on the other side. So it's not so scary. Um, so this idea of just being able to lay your choices out in front of you, understand everything that's going on and make a decision, um, is huge. And that's, it's, it's just, it's actually, it's maybe doesn't, I don't know if it sounds as huge as it actually is experiencing it with someone or experiencing it yourself, but it is huge to just feel that power of choice again. Like you're, you might not like the choices, um, but at least you know what they are because doing, doing the same thing you're doing is a choice. Um, doing things differently is a choice. And here are the three other choices. So um, that, oh my gosh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievably powerful for women to be able to, to make these choices. And it, and it was for me too, but uh, it is unbelievably powerful for, for, for that, to see that happening, to watch that unfold. Great, great. I want to get back to the boot camps because I want you to explain them, but um, we had a couple questions come, come in and I want to remind everyone if they want to use the chat or if they want to send um, an email to info at Savvy Ladies, we can um, take um, your questions. So um, Rebecca, here's the first one. I don't always pay my credit card bill on time. Sometimes I'm just a few days late, but I'm paying the full amount. Does this affect my credit score? It can, depending on how how uh, grouchy your credit card company is about reporting that because yeah, on-time payments is a big deal. Usually I think it's past 30 days that it will start to affect your credit score. Um, but I, you know, it depends. Like I said, it depends. It sounds like this is something that happens often and they may decide to report that. The, the best way to know is to go to your credit, get your credit report 
um, at annualcreditreport.com, not, not the other one that you hear in the commercial, annualcreditreport.com, um, and just see what your credit report is and see if the credit card company is actually reporting that um, to the credit bureau. Because if they are, then start paying it on time. <laughs> but um, but if, they're, if they haven't, then you should be okay. So a couple of days late, I would check. I would check that, annualcreditreport.com. Okay. Yeah. So I want to, I want to make sure that everyone hears that. So credit karma or whatever thing you see advertised on TV is eventually going to cost you money, right? Credit karma actually doesn't. Um, but there's the other one. They do a the little jingle. I'll say the word it's free, free credit report.com is not free. It's not, <laughs> it's like they, they have you sign up for something. So it's annual credit report.com is the, is the one that's actually free, free. Right. So that, and there's a website that's called annual, um, credit card report, right? Annual credit report .com. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So they'll, and so that's, people need to make sure that they don't, um, confuse those two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hello. I, as I watch my 401k grow, I am very tempted to cash it in and pay off my school debt. Is this a bad idea? It feels like an easy solve. <laughs> I hate this question because I get it all. Now it's a good question, but I hate it because I get it all the time and I have a very strong opinion about it. Um, so the, the short answer to your question is yes, it's a bad idea. Um, unless <laughs> you've done all of the exercises, you've read all 191 pages in my book and you've gone through all the exercises and you know exactly how that is going to play out. I wouldn't do it. Um, because you know you're there's so much that you're losing when you cash out your 401k you can either borrow against your 401k or cash it out and there's a lot that you're losing when you do that and by the way when you borrow against your 401k you're just creating other debt so you still need to have a plan to do it it might be a little it's like basically refinancing but you've still got debt um and if you cash it out then it's going to take you I, i'm not an investment advisor but i know that there are models that will show that even like losing five years on your retirement plan can cost you thousands and tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars because of the thing that works against you when you have debt, which is compound interest that works for you um, when you have investments. Um, so, you know, I think my, my opinion is the same as any other financial advisor, which is just don't do it. Find another way to, to do it that maybe take a little longer, may cost you a little bit more money in interest over the long term, but it won't cost you the amount of money that you're going to lose in your retirement account. Um, and if you've done if you've done every single exercise in my book and you're like, nope, I'm going to do it. I know exactly how I'm going to put that money back into my 401k. I'm going to put back in double da da da. If you've done all that, then you would have my blessing. But until that, no, I do not think it is a good idea. But if you but if you take if you cash out your 401k, you. you you're going to take a, what, a 15% hit, right? And oh yeah. And there's penalties on top of the, yeah, you pay penalties, penalties but, and those penalties, penalties still and taxes. Exist. those penalties still exist, even though you're planning on paying off school debt. Yes. Yeah. So they are cashing it out allowance for that. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, Tanya, you, you heard it here. You, <laughs> Rebecca and I say not a good idea. So, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> there was another question that came in about, um, if someone should pay for delete method, if, have you ever heard of that? I, it was a new term to me. No, which what is has, that? Ooh, learning new things. What is that? Okay. It's, it has to do is to remove the collections from my credit report. Once they are paid off in full, can I use the pay for delete method to repair my credit? So I don't do, um, I don't do kind of credit repair work. I do paying off debt work. So I don't know the answer to that. And I'm not going to even try to like make it up for you. I don't know. Okay. I don't okay. know. All right. Um, all right. The last question here is, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pay off my credit card debt, but I also want to build up my savings. Should I do both at the same time or start with one? I, yay, great question. Um, this is actually a big part of one of the workouts in the book. Um, I 100% recommend both savings and paying off debt simultaneously. I will have a lot, there are a lot of people who would disagree with this. Um, maybe not too many, but there are some. There are people who would disagree with this because of the purely financial point that yes, it, why would you you know have money in a savings account earning 0.00001% interest when your debt is costing you, you know, anywhere from like six to 
29% interest. So my retort to that, and it would be a retort, not a response, my retort would be that, that no, that doesn't make financial sense, but neither does debt, right? So debt doesn't make financial sense. So absolutely, um, you know, we're talking about the thinking and feeling and doing aspects of debt. Um, having a savings account is what's going to save you from getting into debt again. Um, so the key is striking the balance for what the right amount of savings is. So the right amount to have in the account as well as the right amount per month um, or per week or however often you want to do it. The key is to find that balance between that and the debt. Um, and there is actually, like I said, there's some great exercises and workouts in the book that I do um, that will help you figure out what that is for yourself because I really think it's different, you know, that it's different for everyone. You know, what amount you need or want to have in savings um, depends on, you know, your lifestyle, your hustle, you know, all kinds of all kinds of fun little things. Um, so you, you can figure that out for yourself and then implement that plan. But, but short answer to, that was a long answer to a short question. The short answer is yes, um, you should. I recommend very much saving and paying off debt at the same time, but how much to allocate is really a question that's unique for, or an answer to a question that's unique for everyone. Wonderful, thanks Rebecca. Um, I wanna take a couple minutes so that, um, I know you have an offer for Savvy Ladies. Um, I'm not yeah. familiar with your boot camp structure, so if we could spend a couple minutes, um, spend a couple minutes just explaining what that is and, and how you run your boot camps, that would be great. Sure, um, let me, so if you're following along on the interwebs, um, there's slides here, I think it's the last one. So this is what the book looks like inside. Um, this is my kind of attitude about money, about debt, is that success is your only option when it comes to debt. So keeping that in mind, this is a solvable problem. Success is your only option. Here's the process. Um, so the boot camp um, is a six-week workshop, and, and then the next one that's that's going to be happening is going to be live. I don't have the dates solid yet, but it's going to be starting in October, um, and it's a six-week workshop where we get together and um, I'm doing this one live, but it hopefully also will be virtual, so live and virtual. Um, where we're in a room with other women and we are dealing with our debt together. So you're going through those steps that we described, going through that process, but we're doing it together. So I'm teaching a little bit and we're working together on it with your numbers. So it's kind of the benefit of having a financial coach um, as well as the support of a group of women who are going through the exact same thing as you. And it's kind of like what happens in boot camp stays in boot camp kind of thing. Um, and so that you're really empowered, not only, you know, about your debt, but also about your, you know, finances generally. So, um, so that's happened. That's on. And if you are interested in being among the first to know when enrollment opens, because like I said, I still have a couple of details to work out, but, um, but it will be happening in October. You can sign up for the VIP list, which is on my website. It's RebeccaEve.com forward slash dominate your debt. So RebeccaEve.com forward slash dominate your debt on that page. You'll see my book. You'll see a little bit of information about the boot camp, And then there's a link to just sign up for the, the VIP list. There's no like obligation. No one's going to like harass you about it. Um, but if you're interested, then that's where that is. The VIP list to get to be first in line and to get an exclusive promo code and sweet bonuses. Okay. And now for the book, was there, did you have a savvy ladies promo for the yes! book? Yes, this is super exciting okay so um i the book is available on amazon if you would like to order if you if you've been like ooh, i want i pretty much i've heard that i write just like i talk so if you're digging the mellifluous sounds of my voice um the book is very much written in that kind of style if you'd like to get a copy it is available on amazon and you can order it and it will be at your house in two days um if you would like me to sign it for you um i have a special super super crazy awesome special offer for savvy ladies um if you are here right now, then you'll be equipped to take advantage of this. So I have a limited special of 40% off the cover price of the book plus free shipping. So I'm going to literally ship it to you directly via priority mail. I'll be stuffing envelopes in my house. Um, so we'll be shipping it to you directly and I will sign it for you and you get 40% off with the code SAVVY40. So S, oh, so S is in Sam, A-V-V-Y 40. And that's just through Friday. So if you are picking up what I'm putting down and you'd really like to order this book, that is through Friday, you can get 40% off. And after that, if you're watching the replay, you probably won't get this in time, but I will still offer 20% off for my Savvy Ladies um, and free shipping with the code Savvy20. So same code. Um, and you can get that by going to my website. Um, not, I cannot, that is not available on Amazon. So that's just on my website. It's RebeccaEve.com 
forward slash sign my book. So that's on the that's in the um, on the the slide that's showing right now. It's Rebecca Eve R E B E C C A E V E dot com forward slash sign my book, and that's forty percent off for Savvy Ladies through Friday, and then twenty percent off after that. Okay, for those of you that are um, joining us for the first time, we will send all this out in a, e a follow-up email so that you have all this information. Um, but thanks, Rebecca. Um, before I let you go, was there, was there any other like tidbits of wisdom that we might have missed? Um, I, I don't want to let you go without. <laughs> I thought that would have been it. I, I got it out of the way too early. That would have been the success is your only option, really. Debt is a solvable problem, and that's the thing to keep in mind, that they, there are choices. There are choices. Um, and this is something that that you can take control of. You can be confident. You can take control, owe less, and live more. You can dominate your debt. Um, it's just a question of having the right structure, the right attitude, and the right feelings in place to be able to make that happen. But it is I, I have yet to meet one person that this was not a solvable problem for. So go forth and prosper. Well, thanks, <laughs> thanks again, Rebecca. I really appreciate your time. And um, as I mentioned, I really enjoyed the book. And I'm going to go back and do the feeling exercise. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> Thanks pretty too, everyone. right? It's a pretty book. So. Yes, yes, it is. It's very, it's, and it is. It has a very nice tone to it, which is right, reflective of you, which I also appreciated. So, um, thanks to everyone who joined us um, today, and thank you again, Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye.